Ladies and gentlemen, there is a new Godzilla movie coming out, a new Japanese Godzilla movie out, Godzilla Minus One. While we've known about it for quite some time, we're finally getting our first images and our first trailers going into this. Let's dive into it because f it looks awesome. I have made it no secret, especially now that all this stuff has come out. I'm more excited for this than I am Godzilla x Kong by far. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of hate the fact that I sort of fall back on the saying because I don't really believe the saying is true. But as of late, it's, it's really been proven that the Japanese just know how to do Godzilla right. He is their baby, it makes sense. Sort of like how we over here in the United States, we know Kong quite a bit because he's our baby. Godzilla's Japan's baby. So it kind of makes sense that that, that sort of idea would, would kind of permeate over there. Though I do find it interesting, I thought that this was going to be called Godzilla Zero. I don't know if that was an official title for a while or not. That's what I always thought that this movie was going to be called, was, was Godzilla Zero. I don't really know why that popped in my head, but I wasn't expecting to see the title come out as Godzilla Minus One. Uh, if anybody knows why they changed the title from Godzilla Zero to Godzilla Minus One, or even if that was a thing, I don't know why that was in my head. Maybe I'm going through a bit of Mandela right now, but please let me know in the comments. Now, I'm actually a fan of this director, Takashi Yamazaki. Not for the movies, though, that, that a lot of people think that he made. Now, as you can tell, I'm a history buff. Look at my... <laughs> my collection shelf behind me. I am a historian and I make history documentaries now almost exclusively for a living. What I find interesting about this movie is that it's been made no secret that this film takes place in the immediate post-war Japan, which is new. This does not take place in 1954 up. This takes place directly in post-war Japan. So we're talking 1945-1946, even during the, the American occupation of Japan. And what gets me excited about this is not the fact that I'm interested in history, and clearly Yamazaki is also interested in history, and look at some of the movies that he's made. But this, again, fits in line with the Reiwa era very well. And that is where the Reiwa era is very willing to try to experiment with what does Godzilla mean? What does it mean to be a Godzilla movie? What makes a Godzilla movie? And they're willing to experiment for good and for bad. For example, I think in uh, the, the anime trilogy of movies, uh, that wasn't handled the best, but I at least thought the universe was interesting, and it was definitely a new take on Godzilla. Godzilla Singular Point, definitely a new take on Godzilla that I greatly enjoyed. Shin Godzilla, the same deal. And that gets me so excited, especially when Hollywood seems to be very content with going with the bare-bones, basic, generic, stuff that we've seen before when it comes to our giant monster movies. I actually have not seen Yamazaki's most famous two films, and those movies are always Sunset on 3rd Street. Of course, I have, of course, seen Godzilla's cameo in the second movie, but the two movies of his that I have seen and adore, I just love these two movies to no end, are Eternal Zero and The Great War of Archimedes. Eternal Zero is about, you know, kamikaze pilots, and The Great War of Archimedes is about the building of the Yamato ship. It's a very bureaucratic, heavy movie. They, they scratch an itch for me that I, that I really enjoyed, and they're just visually good. The acting's good. The writing's pretty damn good. The music's phenomenal. And it clearly shows that Yamazaki has a great interest in Japanese World War II history which could bite him in the butt because if you look at some of the people that have written some of his scripts they belong to the Japanese revisionist group which means that they deny things like the Nanking massacre and basically think Japan did absolutely no wrong during the second world war I don't have any proof to think Yamazaki thinks like that because Eternal Zero is quite a damnation on Japan at the time, uh, but it is a little worrisome considering the fact that Yamazaki is kind of known to hang around with those crowds of people. If you want to learn more about that, if you're actually curious about that, I did an entire video about it on how Japan views the Second World War and basically a study of their historiography uh, going from the post-war Japan all the way to the modern day. If you want to check that out and kind of learn a little bit more of why I'm a little concerned about that, but oh well. But it, 
I'm not totally worried about that. But it is clear that he is a fan of his history. Yamazaki is a fan of his history. Uh, which is definitely an explanation as to why Godzilla's coming where he's coming, you know? <laughs> uh, it definitely sort of explains that. Now, in terms of that trailer, that trailer is actually 100% what I thought it was going to be. This is going to be like the first God Shin Godzilla teaser. We're going to see people running. We're going to see a giant foot come down, and we might get a little glimpse of what this new Godzilla looks like. And that's exactly what we got. This doesn't even really reveal the... Um, the plot other than that it kind of gives away that yes this is immediate post-war japan now it does indeed have a confirmed u.s release date for december 1st 2023 which is awesome uh i don't think i don't remember shin godzilla right from the get-go getting getting an official u.s release so it is quite clear that someone over there has some good faith in this movie and thinks that this movie will make at least some money over here in the West. And I'm guessing the release itself will actually kind of look a bit like the Shin Godzilla release, which was awesome. I went to that film twice. I saw that twice in theaters. But unfortunately, because of where I live now, that probably means I won't be able to see it until it comes out on Blu-ray, which is unfortunate. So I'll probably be a little bit late to the game when it comes to me discussing this movie and talking this movie and being able to digest this movie, kind of like how I am right now with Shin Kamen Rider. I still haven't seen Shin Kamen Rider, and I desperately want to. Now, the real meat and cream of all of this is the Godzilla design itself. Now, SH Monster Arts, uh, they released their toy fully revealing the design of this new Godzilla, but I do like taking a look at them because they're, they're a really good look at what these designs are, where their flaws are, where, where their strengths are, and stuff like that. And let's actually take an in-depth look at what works with this design because, quite frankly, it is a fantastic design. Uh, like, look at those. This is fan This is fantastic. Um, I'm going to just scroll down here. Like, I look at this design, right? And you know what's the first thing that immediately comes out to me? This is extremely Heisei, believe it or not, especially in the head. And, you know, the head and the, the chest and stuff like that, that's very Heisei. And I didn't realize I was missing Heisei Godzilla designs until I came across this, and I was like, wow, that was an itch that really needed to scratch. Evidently, this is actually designed by Yamazaki himself, because if you look at this design as compared to what appeared in Always Sunset on 3rd Street 2, and then you compare the Godzilla ride that came out, all in which he had his paws on, it's almost like this particular Godzilla design has been slowly evolving to what it is now. It's been going through trials and errors. Because if you look at this design to the ride, and then from the ride to Always Sunset uh, on 3rd Street 2, you can see an evolution. They are clearly the same basic design, growing and changing and evolving as Yamazaki has gotten older. And this appears to be the final outcome of that design which the fact that he's worked on some video games i know he has at least some graphic designing background and stuff like that it doesn't design it doesn't surprise me that he would be working on a godzilla design especially considering the fact that he is a rather big fan of the franchise but like this angle looks great like i i really love this angle but it's this this is my only complaint with this design is i don't really care for those spikes they look great from just about every angle except these two and I think they're a little too sporadic. I think they need to be a little bit wider and a little bit closer together. The one thing that I genuinely love about these particular spike designs that I love that they're going, it's kind of like a mixture of, uh, of Millennium Sharpness, but Heisei Maple Leaf, which I do genuinely like. I mean, if I ever made a Godzilla design, it would be something kind of similar to this. Actually, I think my Godzilla design would actually look very similar to this, including the placement of the spikes in terms of the largest one coming up top and then they get smaller as they go down. I, I genuinely like that. Uh, I believe the 2002 design has that uh, and the 2002 Godzilla design is my second favorite Godzilla design of all time uh, right underneath the 1991 Godzilla design. So as you can see this is a, this is a really good marriage of Heisei and, and uh, that 
2002 design, which I which I genuinely like. I like that he's actually got some dragon fangs, too. You know, I was kind of sick of the crocodilian style that we were getting, especially in the American Godzilla and the sort of insane shark-like teeth that we got within, Shin, within uh, Shin Godzilla. I like that it's quite clear he's got some dragon fangs here. It's a single row. Um, very reminiscent, or it's kind of more reminiscent of Heisei as well, or, or at least from 89 forward. I mean, if you look at the 84 design, that's definitely Dragon Fangs. But, like, I really love this face. That face is 100% Heisei. I, I don't care what anyone says. Like, the shape of the jaw, the, especially the brow. That brow really screams Heisei, and... Guys, I don't think I can say it enough. I have i didn't realize this was an itch that needed to be scratched until I saw it. Like, I'm so excited for a Heisei-designed-looking Godzilla again. Because a Heisei era was my era of Godzilla. It, it will always be my favorite era of Godzilla. And seeing this design look as good as it is and really capture the essence that was Heisei-Godzilla is really exciting to me. And then I also noticed that in terms of the feet design, it looks like they kept the Shin Godzilla stuff. So yeah, this is kind of a hodgepodge of different Godzilla designs that all in which I like, <laughs> you know, all in which I'm, I'm absolutely okay with. What I do find a little interesting and I do want to comment on briefly is actually the, the skin tone. Now, in, in these images, you definitely see a lot more of that typical charcoal gray that Godzilla normally is. But if you watch the trailer itself, he actually looks quite brown, like a reddish brown, which is interesting if you know about the history of Godzilla. And you can kind of see some of this reddish brown in his chest, in his leg area, in his feet. You can definitely see it in his feet, but you see some of this reddish brown. So he's not totally charcoal gray. Now, if you know any of the history of Godzilla, which I'm actually going to bring myself full screen up for this. Um, if you know anything about the history of Godzilla, uh, you'll know uh, the story of Bob Burns coming across the Godzilla Raids Again suits for both Godzilla and Anguirus. Interestingly, he described the skin tones of Godzilla and Anguirus as a reddish brown, not charcoal gray. And that's actually the color that I think these suits kind of were until of course color film came about and we got king kong versus godzilla and that sort of solidified the charcoal gray coloring considering the fact that this movie takes place immediately after world war ii so we're talking again 1945 1946 which is before 1954 it'd be interesting to see that this godzilla is actually that sort of brownish red again so it might be a little bit of meta stuff going on there. I don't really know if that's true or not. I'll be interested to know. It, at least in terms of the coloring in the film, the color coding, they certainly made him look a reddish brown. These toys are clearly more charcoal gray. So just an interesting observation. I'm probably reading too much into that. Who cares? You know, this is a speculation video. I don't normally like doing these videos because usually whatever I talk about tends up, ends up being completely and totally 100% wrong. So my final thoughts to sum up all of this, I I am stoked. <laughs> I am so stoked. Japan knows how to do Godzilla. I have faith in the director. He is a good director. He's very good at formulating a story. He's good at handling humor. He's good at handling dark, serious topics. He's good at handling bureaucratic double talk. He's a good director, guys. And I, I, I think Godzilla is once again in very good hands. In fact, I haven't been this excited for for a couple of movies for a very long time. So look at this. In in November, I've got Napoleon, which is my bread and butter, and then you have Godzilla minus one come December. I I, I am a happy boy right now. So tell me in the comments what you thought of Godzilla minus one. What do you think? What are your fears? Are you nervous about this movie? Are you as excited as I am? Uh, let me know. What do you think of this design? Uh, I'll put a link to this article in the description as well, so you can see exactly what I'm seeing and sort of digest it on your own pace. This is Adam Noyce of AN Productions saying, Sayonara. <laughs>